Hey guys, it's James here, and this is the second part of our Plectrum special with Freddie Draper. This lesson's a little bit different because I'm handing over the reins to top e-bass guitar coach Freddie Draper. If you haven't already checked it out, make sure you check out part one of this video series. But right now, I'm gonna leave you with part two. But just a quick thing, if you love what you're seeing today and you think, I really want to study with Freddie one-on-one. -on -one. The great news is you can do that. And at the end of this lesson, I'm going to show you exactly how. But right now, let's check out part two. Here's Freddie. Song number four, Parallel Universe by Red Hot Chili Peppers, played by the one and only universally unequivocally adored Mr. Flea. Flea is notorious for his really aggressive finger funk playing and ludicrous slap playing, but his pick playing is actually quite overlooked. This is a really, really difficult song and you can thank me for this one later. In terms of the actual notes, it's not very tricky at all. We're in the key of C minor, and we're starting on C on the D string. And I think this is way easier to play all on one string. Flea doesn't play it all on one string, but I'm going to suggest that you do to get this technique up. It's the only way that I seem to be able to play it myself. But C minor, B flat, so fret 10 on the D string to fret 8 on the D string. And then double dots on the D, up to E flat, fret 13 down to G, which is fret 5 on the D string, and then we're going to go 17, which is the octave, 15, which is F, 13 back to E flat, and then down to D again, which is that double dot there. And then in terms of the actual tempo, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's kind of around there. So, this might be very challenging for you to do with the pick to start with. So the best way to approach this is to simplify the line and build it up. So to begin with, just single notes. And then when you're comfortable with that, try doubles. I'm doing it all as downstrokes at the moment. This is really important because ultimately when you come to fill in the subdivisions, they will all be downstrokes anyway. You'll just put all the upstrokes in between. So the question that you've probably got, how the heck do we actually build up to that level of stamina? You basically want to move back and through the string with as little movement as possible. If you think about physics, if I'm doing a really large movement like this, it means that I've got to actually use a lot more energy and arguably time as well in order to reset the motion. So if I make it really, 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 really small. The other thing that I find helpful is I actually kind of tuck my fingers away on the top strings. Something else that you might want to consider doing is creating little sort of speed bursts. So this is more of a heavy metal technique, but it can be applied to any other style of music, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a downstroke, and then I'm gonna immediately flick up. As quickly as I can. Because the tricky part of this isn't necessarily the speed, it's just getting the sort of relaxation and the agility and controlling that in time with the rest of the music. So we're gonna go one, two, maybe two, three, four, five, six, Oh, that was seven, seven, eight. Taking it under tempo and then use a combination of the techniques that we've looked at already. So the chorus itself, we've got C in the usual place, 
on uh, fret 10, fret 5 on the D string, fret 6 on the D string, A flat, E flat, fret 13, G, fret 5 on the D string. And that sound doubled up it. Just about the track is it slows down very, very slightly. Um, we just want to make sure that we don't get too out of time there. You'll you'll hear when when I'm playing it through, I do tend to sort of stay consistent with the previous tempo. Um, it's just one of those things because um, they haven't recorded this to click. It's still pretty amazingly solid timing, to be fair. That's not a criticism. So I mentioned earlier, Flea doesn't play this all on one string. He actually plays using his whole arm, apparently. And I'm told that he wears some sort of like glove or wristband or something like that. Let me know in the comments if any of that stuff's true. I've seen the Red of Chili Peppers a couple of times, but I don't recall that making an appearance. But for those of you interested, the way that Flea plays it is like this. Tonally, I do prefer the sound of it. It's kind of a better exercise in some ways to practice all this like crazy jumping on the single string, but that's something for me to work on. So there you have it, that's Parallel Universe. Absolute roast, get stuck into it, enjoy. So here we are with baseline number five. This is Roundabout by one of my personal favorite bands of all time, yes. <laughs> Chris Squire, bass hero of mine, notorious for his sort of pioneering of the plectrum technique on the bass. His lines are generally very agile, really, really flashy, very, very fast, very, very often not in 4-4 as well. A large part of his sound comes from the Rickenbacker bass that he would play. That would boast having two outputs, so you could take an output from each of the pickups which means that you can kind of get the best of both worlds and you don't lose any of that information that you often do when you start sort of adding extra drive or EQs or anything like that to the bass. I've got something very similar to a Rickenbacker here. It's unfortunately not the real thing, but it sounds and looks very, very similar. With a line like this that's very involved in terms of articulation and in terms of the picking technique, you can hear that you've got pretty much all of the picking techniques that we've looked at in these other bass lines so far, except double stops. We've got galloping, We've got a bit of speed and agility in there. It's going to require loads of stamina. We've got hammer-ons, we've got pull-offs. It's riddled with articulation as well. One thing that this line contains that we haven't looked at already is dead notes. So dead notes, you simply just touch the string. You don't push it down. So you get this kind of like muted sound. And it just helps bring the bass line to life so much more. So what's going on with the rhythm? Sometimes it's worth breaking down a bass line to just the rhythm. We don't even need the bass guitar for this. If I have a look at the notation and I have a listen, I'm constantly trying to figure out where there are patterns. And those first three beats, they're all the same rhythm. So what I would do is I would turn this into a picking exercise. I take my E string and just mute it with the left hand and I would try and play that rhythm. Now you can see I'm really struggling to do it using alternative picking. I'm going to have to come up with some kind of articulation that serves three notes rather than two or four notes. Typically with this rhythm, which is referred to as a galloping rhythm sometimes, you tend to go down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, you get the two strong sounds of the down pick. This. Okay. So I just go one, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, ah, one, two, three, four, like this. So what I'll then do is I'll have a listen to the rhythm of beats three going into beat four. Dun, 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 dun,
Okay, so it's four semiquavers on that fourth beat. Let's start unpacking the pitches of the line. So this line pretty much uses an E minor scale. It's ascending up E minor. So we're going E, F sharp, G, A, B. And rather than going up to C and carrying on, it goes down to A, and then back up to B, and then D and E. Okay, that's the line. And you can hear that going from that G, we've got G, G, A, B, dead note, D, E. So I turn that into an exercise itself. I go three, four. Okay, I try and separate them. And then when I feel comfortable, I'll put them back together. So, in terms of the fingers that I'm using, I'm pretty much exclusively using fingers one and two. I'm making sure to mute any of the strings that I am not in contact with with the first finger. Occasionally, my thumb is creeping over as well, just to make sure that that E is muted, particularly when it's up to speed. So there you have it, that's roundabout. There's actually not an awful lot to it, but it's really essential to have a good foundation of the techniques that we've already looked at in these other bass lines already. If you enjoyed what you've watched today, please let us know in the comments. If there's any bass lines that you want me to look at, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all soon. Cheers. So that's the end of part two. If you haven't already done it, make sure you check out part one as well. But right now, at the beginning of the lesson, I promised I'd tell you how you can study with Freddie one on one. The great news is Freddie is one of our VIP coaches over at eBass Guitar and works with a select few students over there to help them push their bass playing up to stratospheric levels. What you can do right now is you can apply it to work with him. So type in the link ebassguitar.com forward slash VIP, or I'll put a link in the description below, and you can fill in the form on the website there and apply it to work with him. That's it for now, and I will see you again next week on the eBass Guitar YouTube channel. Cheers for now.